<laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. What's up? <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for coming to the chat. We're ready to go. We're uh, we're we're gonna start doing the our cryptocurrency weekly roundup. We're the Crypto Basic Podcast. You can listen to us every week, a couple times a week, usually. And uh, if you're if you're interested, we're gonna be doing a 101 on the Waves platforms coming up in the next couple days. And then, of course, we've got our Friday flagship all the time. And you know what, Mike, you can kick it off with the big rail because I actually forgot to get the link for the Reddit post. I got the article link. So kick us off, Mike. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so I actually forgot to get my favorite comment, but I will start off with the link. So this story is uh, slightly near and dear to our hearts. Uh, Brent and I have some history with Nano, and I actually used this exchange prior to it uh, committing an exit scam however yeah uh, let's so, get started on the story uh, oh, just go ahead, Brent. like real quick the big rail if you aren't familiar it's like they were an exchange based around ryblox at the time and right around when it switched to nano they exit scam and stole everybody's money that's the quick version all right so the owner and operator was francisco furiano uh, he was the owner of operator of big rail um, he announced that they got hacked for $17 million worth of nano. And I, I, for my own personal amount of research, I did, I did some uh, <laughs> updates of pricing. So a year ago when he made this announcement, it was almost a year ago, uh, nano was $18 and 47 cents currently today trading at less than dollar 87 cents. Not that I care about prices, but <laughs> no, man, brutal, come on now. <laughs> perspective wise, I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, so Mike, real quick, side note, I, I have to comment that you guys know I'm usually not super open to like new coins and stuff. But after we did the Nano episode, I remember being like, man, this is like really interesting. I really I think this is going to be one of the ones I'm going to pull the trigger on. And I ended up just getting distracted or running out of money, probably. And uh, and then all of this happened. But I was just like probably just a couple of weeks away from jumping on. But okay, so just just so that everybody listening to us kind of understands where we're coming from, like, I don't know that you're necessarily saying that Nano is not something you would invest in, but I think you're just trying to say that you are fortunate that you didn't decide to invest at these correct, correct. At higher had, prices. I had already decided that I would, that I was willing to, uh, and I just like circumstance made it that I just hadn't gotten around to it or it got delayed or whatever. But I was sold. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Uh, so I'm not but saying that, anything negative about it. it just what, exactly what you said. Right. It's circumstantial. And it, yeah. it's interesting because like just because the price has crashed so much in most of these cryptos doesn't I don't necessarily blame the individual projects for that. It doesn't you know, it's kind of just the overall space as a whole was hyperinflated. And, you know, now we're kind of learning how we're supposed to adjust or how we're going to re you know, adjust to these times. But back to the story here. Um, so there was an Italian bankruptcy court and I thought this was kind of interesting. They brought a technical, they brought a technical expert to help the courts uh, rule on this. And he kind of like worked in um, conjunction with the judge. I don't know if that's a common thing or not, but I thought that was interesting. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? I, I don't know how common it, it needs to happen in cases like this, because otherwise nobody's going to understand how to decide if this idiot was lying about the, him getting hacked or if he just stole the money. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm. I have to assume that it's standard for judges to often, uh, you know, get some kind of guidance when they're ruling on something that they're not an expert on, and that you need a level of expertise in order to understand what's going on. You know. Yeah, like in the U.S., we have a tech firm that's run by, um, or it's a uh, cybersecurity firm run by Rudy Giuliani, and I think that they get hired for a lot of things, and they're <laughs> super smart. <laughs> oh my lord I, I know that was probably politically brutal I, I know Giuliani he's studio, a really about stupid all old fuck that thought his twitter was hacked because he accidentally put a link in it and like the way he <laughs> typed it and then somebody bought the website and put a troll on there because he had a link in his in his twitter and he said he was hacked <laughs> and he runs the and he and firm. he's Donald Trump's chief uh secure uh in, like IT security advisor. Nice. <laughs> so, yes, I'm just going to put that there at the end. He's also okay. Like, so hopefully this guy right. wasn't Rudy Giuliani's company. That, that's all. <laughs> this, is a, this is in Italy, so I think they're less idiotic in their court proceedings. 
So uh, currently, authorities have seized over $1 million in personal assets, including his car. Um, and the court has appointed several trustees to, you know, gain control of those funds or manage them just because, you know, you can't have a centralized, you know, point of authority controlling millions of, of personal assets that are seized from people. Uh, let's yeah, see here. Or else so, they'll steal it and say they were hacked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So this was where it gets a little interesting. Uh, the Nano had been removed from the exchange a significant amount of time earlier, a little more than a year prior to the announcement. Uh, July of 17 through December of 17, um, there was about 250K worth of Nano that was removed. And then eventually it went 2.5 million in July and then another 7.5 million in October. Uh, and what the Italian courts really decided was that it took the the owner over a year to actually make this public announcement. The price of Nano had gone up over 100x from the original time that the theft had happened until the time it was announced. And eventually they decided that he was very responsible for maintaining all the public keys of all these individual parties. And they were holding him responsible for you know, massive losses that all of those participants had to go through because their assets had gone up in value so much over that time. Interesting. Mm. That's good. So, what? yeah, I mean, like, if it's not theft, which we, we kind of know it's theft, right? But let's say you have to go through all the process and prove it in court. At the very least, we're talking about gross, gross negligence. And then... To the um, point where they're basically treating it as theft. Right. Well, I think they went into the court as if that was his defense. That's what I that's kind of what I understood. So right. a couple more interesting things that developed. He he did move it from a sole proprietorship to an LLC sometime once these thefts had happened. Um, <laughs> and then days before making this public announcement, he deposited 230 Bitcoin into a personal trading account for a Bitcoin to Euro exchange called the Rock Trading which I don't know, that's kind of an interesting name, The Rock. Mm -hmm. um, he also has uh, noted tons of ATM withdrawals around the time of this happening. So he like absolutely knew he was fucked. He was trying to get as much off of as he could. He was trying to, you know, ATM withdraw as much of the euros as he could get at the time. He was about to, so, he was about to run the fire festival. If we remember mm -hmm. what happened, not long after this announcement was made, he tried to win back the community by saying, look, guys, look, guys, they stole from me and I'm sorry this happened. I'm going to go ahead and promise you guys 20 percent of your funds back to you because I'm such a nice guy. And guess what? <laughs> we're also going to do. Here's another thing we're going to do. We're going to we're going to announce Bit Grail shares. So if you want to invest in that then we can decentralize this process a little more. And, you know, if you guys want to that way. And then he also added something like, oh, but don't worry, uh, I'll pay you back in full with BitGrail shares. Like, OK, guy, like this is not at all. So Italian court buried him. Uh, he's bankrupt. They've taken a ton of his assets. This is this is a win for the cryptocurrency community. And, uh, you know, the many more of these cases are going to start popping up and how they're handled internationally is going to be important for other nations and other provinces to you know, say, hey, how are we going to handle similar situations? Here's the thing I always mention when it comes to the the Ryblox exchange here, BitRail, that got crushed. Um, if you had your money on there, whether it was stolen from you on BitRail or whether you just held it, didn't matter. Same result. You, you got to keep a few percentages of your funds if you held. But uh, the What if I, you sold them to your friend? Yeah, if you sold them to your friend, you got to sell at the top and then they got fucked um for those that don't know mike sold me a bunch of ryblox at like 35 dollars a share so that was fun um and <laughs> <laughs> but i'm hoping that there's a Timing way everything. that like his total theft is only worth like eight hundred thousand, but they somehow get like two million out of him and screw him even more for what he did because okay. i'm sure this had a lot to do with the downward pressure on the price and all that so I would like us to use our editorial powers to tangent a little bit here because I, I see a parallel. Brent, did you see, did you reference the fact that you saw the festival uh, documentary? Yeah, Fire Festival, bro. Fire, 
bro, tell me. Okay, so this guy, this big real guy, he sounds like he has whatever mental disease the guy who was doing the fire festival has. Whatever Is that the one like, in the Caribbean that like was a big scam? Yeah, it was basically yeah, but the guy running it was just lying to everybody and defrauding everybody and just like ponzing it up. And then like the second it crashes down, he's just like trying to do it again while he's on bail. <laughs> like, bro, it's so compul. It's it's like you genuinely feel like okay, there's something wrong with this person because at this point it's suicide, you know, and they keep going. So, you know. It's just crazy, you know. I that like. I, I like this tangent because I I see this a lot. I'm getting older. My daughter's getting older. I'm feeling more wise, you know. So maybe that's not the case, but I, I just feel like humans are a product of their upbringing more than I've ever realized. And unfortunately, some of those products of their upbringing is very scary and very like unpredictable. And you know, I just think that people are willing to do anything for fight or flight survival yeah it's true because that's another thing you see that as the situation gets more desperate their behavior gets more like did he did he not think that people like there was going to be a link to the fact that he was withdrawing money from the atm every day <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what i mean like obviously that's going to incriminate you and obviously you already have a ton of money but everything's crashing down and and you know the pressure's coming in and now you're willing that fight or flight that you're talking about that becomes even, uh, you know, it's magnified. It's crazy. The anatomy of a Ponzi scheme is interesting. We're going to, you know, there, maybe there's going to be a documentary about some of these ICOs one day. Seems inevitable. And I, I'm super interested in the your documentary of Ripple because I, every time we go over a story, it, it really confuses me as to, you know, where it's going to be in the future. It's certainly a big enough player in this space that's going to be around. So, Kareem, what what did you find in this article about Ripple? Well, you know, I'm, I shared it because it got, um, you know, it was highly upvoted. But also, I noticed that there's a big rift in the community from the comments. But the article is pretty straightforward. It's just Ripple released their quarterly reports and it's titled Ripple sold $535 million worth of Ripple in 2018. Um, and then it basically just links to their report all the money that they're spending. Now, of course, that money is being spent, for example, on institutional direct sales. That's how they label it. Uh, and programmatic sales. So I guess to fund development and to fund the community growth. But, you know, you're talking about a lot of money. So first of all, this, this starts to put into context, like, this is still... I mean, I know Ripple's one of the largest cryptocurrencies, so it's an exception in a way. But this is how much operating income a major cryptocurrency team has. Kareem, I want to pause you real quick, if you don't mind. I, I yeah, have a kind ahead. of a, an interesting question here. So I guess philosophically, if a company like Ripple, one of our big knocks on them is that they controlled a large percentage of the tokens. And even though I believe the majority of them have been stagnant, the fact that they have them is relevant so if you're a company this large and you're able to make transactions with your own currency to this scale like i don't know if this also similar to bitgrail is part of downward pressure right like if you have a you know a side chain i guess that's what i'm going to refer to most of these as um if you have you know your company like ripple and you have investors, you have people that are, you know, a part of your network. But at the end of the day, you're trying to transact with this. Some of the larger parties are going to be able to really move the markets, not really intentionally, right? If you're moving um, like like nine figures worth of the crypto, and even if your project's as large as something like Ripple, like there's going to be... I hate to use this word, but a ripple effect like through the whole community. <laughs> oh, you got there, my guy. Well. Oh my god! Well. I really <laughs> okay. hope everybody puts too in convenient. some it was too convenient to leave stupid that out. troll faces and hit you with bananas and stuff because that was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. But listen, I agree with you, Mike, and I think that the answer is it really it depends. It's open, but isn't that tough to like also criticize them for at the same time? I don't. No, I don't know. I'm conflicted. 
yeah, this is that's what I'm saying. Like on the one hand, yes, if if you have all this money concentrated, it just opens the door for all kinds of irresponsible use for draining, for overpaying for salaries, for manipulating money, for manipulating markets, etc. It also gives you a ton of money that if properly managed and properly distributed and invested and carefully thought out uh, in such a way that is designed to actually grow the community, you could do a lot, you know? So a lot of those pressures can also, can also make it do well. Uh, maybe the profit to increase the value uh, and all these institutional investors and stuff, there's positive ways to do it. Um, it's hard to tell. It depends on whether or not Ripple can manage this properly, I think. But obviously, it'll never have the properties of a decentralized uh, network. You just can't. The only way to do that is to be decentralized, right? Like, Quasi, one thing I will say is that we were all collectively extremely against Ripple early on, trying to be more open-minded as we go. That's <laughs> We're trying to be big boys, too. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. evolved from, like, fuck Ripple to, oh, okay, like, Ripple's a fine project. Just not for us as far as, like, you know, the <laughs> philosophy behind why we got into crypto kind of thing. Yeah, just because you don't personally invest in something doesn't mean that something's illegitimate. You know, uh, there's multiple reasons to invest in something. Uh, but I did uh, I um, did like this quote. I felt like uh, you guys would like this quote in the report, quarterly report. It says, while stable coins are an interesting technology and worth exploring, the industry should be cautious about coins backed by a single entity as compared to decentralized digital assets. So it seems and, that from Ripple's perspective, there's still a decentralized digital asset, just for what it's worth. Well, like, XRP is reasonably decentralized, just not in who controls the <laughs> the supply. So right, right. But anyway, um, I didn't pick any particular comment, guys. But it, going through this thread, it shows what extreme positions there are on Taylor and how much Ripple. like anger it arises. And here's one thing I will say: a lot of people were criticizing this. Um, basically ragging on Tether for it being this much money. But Ripple. to me, it's like, so, sorry, Tether, I just read that last stable point <laughs> quote. Yeah, Ripple. Um, ragging on Ripple. Tether, spending, we are not mixed feelings about, by the way. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, for spending so much money, but there's no context. This is just a quarterly report. At least they're releasing the numbers. You know what I'm saying? You want transparency. Yes. The question of whether or not that was spent properly you know, we don't know. We don't have that information from this report. So it does seem like people just want to jump on and destroy it. Oh, look, a number, <laughs> a number with no context whatsoever. OK, you I can use that for whatever you want it to mean. I have a little anecdote from last night at like three in the morning, right? Like this. So I, I was finishing up research for the Waves 101 episode, and I hadn't figured out if they were being controlled by a foundation or if there was some sort of DAO because it was, like, mentioned in, like, a couple of things. So I was like, you know what? I'll just pop into the Telegram and I'll ask. So I popped into the Telegram and I was like, hey, who controls, like, the ICO funds? And the admin's response was, I cannot discuss the nature of of where the ICO funds are or who has them. And <laughs> I was like, wait, what? And I was so blown away by that being the response that obviously people go in there and kind of question, like, how are the funds being spent? So that's a that's a project that's not being transparent about what they're spending and how they're spending it. So at least if you're going to control a massive amount of the coins, yeah, being, uh, being transparent in what you're doing with those funds is at least nice of you. All right, we have a question here. Hey guys, before I forget, I wanted to ask you if you were aware of the vert coin fork that is scheduled for this Friday. They're forking away from. Da -da -da -da. All right, uh, hold on, hold on. Not... Stop, 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 stop. All right, Brent and Cream, do you guys even know that vert coin exists? Um, I mean, I know it exists. I don't know much about vert coin. It's it's. Of course, uh, I know too... about vert coin. It was the coin that was mentioned in Grindlord's comment, Mike. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, I, look, I no, support I uh, ASIC resistance in a in a philosophical manner, and I realize that it may hurt networks mm. in the short term because they are going to have less hash power for a little bit. But um, I think in the long term, it's it better for the environment. Yes, it's better uh, for decentralization. Yeah. So I support. That's any like saying and all poker ASIC pros aren't coin. allowed in your game. What? Yeah, I mean it's good for your game. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't I like <laughs> great from, point, from a from an <laughs> overall you know decentralization perspective. I don't know if that I I see both sides. I just I just totally wanted to play devil's advocate here. Okay, so the one point I'll make is there's a good argument to be made that maybe ASIC resistance is not possible. Like that in the long term. Uh, Something new will be innovated. Yeah, like if if uh, if a system's out there for long enough, unless you're constantly changing the algorithm, that, at least that's, that was my understanding of it, that a lot of things that we thought were ASIC resistance over time just turn out not to be because you can always target one specific uh, system. Yeah, so I guess you have to continuously innovate your algorithm or something like that to keep it going but it takes a while to develop um in asic and if you know the coin is just going to fork as soon as you get one ready then yeah, it's probably worth uh it's it's probably well but that doing. i think some of the ideas are you know there's so many of these these chains that forked off of bitcoin that you know if you're doing your own type of you know fork and, and redistribution that's great but other types of coins may not do as much forking or as much, you know, update to their own code. So I believe these ASICs are going to still keep getting developed at a very high rate, even if your particular chain may be move, moving off of it. All right. Kareem posted in the comments that I need to talk about <laughs> sex. All right. So. All right, guys. Uh, I saw this in the, in the our cryptocurrency. And I decided, eh, I don't know what the upside is here, but Brent saw the upside. What did you find for us? All right, look. So the first thing I'm going to say is this was clearly like somebody shilling and using a nice clickbait title to get everybody to upvote the shit out of this because like there's not a lot of value here. There's not a lot of like interesting shit going on with this. Uh, with this particular project, but it's titled like exclusive dozens of sex websites about to accept cryptocurrencies. But, um, <laughs> you know, that the, <laughs> the first what comment is a sex website, uh, yeah, exactly. A sex website, Michael, is a website which promotes sex. Yeah, I, I, I assumed it was going to be porn, but they, they, Went a little bit deeper. So this site is called Intimate.io that they that they're doing like an ICO. Uh, uh, they're raising funds for their token, the ITM, and they're an Australian sex startup, and they want to have all kinds of sex on on blockchain, not just not just porn, not just. They're not going the verge route. They're going the like everything route. Um, I I. Raisin, exactly. Nobody pays to watch porn these days. However, paying for sex, I can attest, is a real thing and happens. So, <laughs> so uh, I've heard. <laughs> so, um, the so, so far, they're basically creating a payment processing system that's got some form of zero knowledge proofs involved, I guess. So they that right now they take Ethereum, Binance Coin, and Bitcoin. And of course, their coin on their payment processing. And there was an amazing quote by, I think, the founder in there. He said, A few months after we started, there was Jizz coin, Tit coin, Fuck coin, Sex coin, Pink coin, Ken coin, and a handful of other coins. Uh, <laughs> and I, I know I saw like some of those at some point, and, but I guess like he refers to them as real projects. Uh, as far as we're concerned, the only <laughs> other real porn project is spank chain or i guess verge depending on how you feel about that um here the whole article well, hold on a second. didn't tron and horizon also get that same partnership yes that's true so it's no longer just verge being synonymous it's it's officially three to four porn cryptocurrencies yes the the uh, the top For comment now. in here was from medic three 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 six Thank God I'm still holding my 600 XVG. Mike, hopefully you've still got your tips from the Verge Discord. Um, oh, my God. I didn't move it off there. Uh, that was amazing. Side tangent, in case you're not a listener of an episode, we had to punish Mike one time for like losing at a contest. So we sent him into the Verge Discord and made him beg for money. So he had to go in, and, and we just fucked up and made it too low. 
because he went in and was just like, oh, hey, guys, what's up? And then, like, said Rich a couple awesome. nice Can things. Hold on, hold on. And then on. they gave I him money. At least f- I sent at least five messages yeah. to get those. And he's like, what do I got to do to get a tip of five verge? And then somebody gave him five verge. So was- <laughs> <laughs> sometimes uh, you just got to stand on the street corner and panhandle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... But the comments in this particular thread are great. Uh, crypto just got naughty. When XVG. And, like, I think they're actually referring to the Verge thing as, like, the virgins. And, therefore, they might actually need to to pay for sex via blockchain. I'm not sure. Um, that's It had some really funny name uh combo there oh I yeah, yeah. that's that. like what people call them when they're trolling them the, All right. the virgin coin yeah look finally one of the use cases that they described which sounded a little bit interesting was zero knowledge sti results so like what? you can just know heads or tails this person infected or not you don't even know what they're infected with you just know i can have sex with this person or i cannot have sex with this person and it's what's an sti Essentially sexually transmitted what? sexually transmitted infection infection oh yes. I, I call them stds i don't know about you guys they're they're both standard never heard that yeah so so imagine like a privacy oriented coin where y'all you can meet up with somebody you might be paying for sex and just as you know obviously before you attack her you're gonna wrap your whacker but you can just make oh sure God. like like you know Heads or tails, just press the button and you're like, all right, we're clean. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, anyway, I don't know how this got to the top of our cryptocurrency, but I'm glad it did because otherwise I wouldn't have talked about it. All right. All right, so, well, let's move on, Kareem. Uh, yeah. We're going to go to the United Kingdom. What's going on with IOTA and a previous theft? The United Kingdom. Here it is, you know where brexit is going on and stuff well that is apparently the site of the big iota hack that happened uh a long time ago if you guys remember there was a situation where basically when iota came out instead of just like your regular uh, you know passphrase like card wallets you have to generate a seed which needed to be random so one of the members of the community a guy that went by the name of Norbert TV Burke. That was the screen name. Uh, they haven't released. No, his name. it's 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 not that. It's I thought it was not Bert VD Berg. I yeah. thought it was a T. Okay. Like I think I'm I thought sorry, he was literally man. like, "Hey, I'm not this guy." <laughs> no, I think it's Norbert TV Burke. Okay. And Norbert sounds like something a British person would like. So, back down. <laughs> We'll see. I'm going to fact check it. Oh, All right. Go, go fact check it. All right. So oh, it Brent is Nor. Ah, oh, the- man. Oh, damn it. Hate when Kareem's right. <laughs> I love to it. It. <laughs> it's the second worst thing to me being right. <laughs> so, so true. I'm never as bad as you are. No way. Okay. But anyway, so what this guy did, guys, I was second. create a site where people would go and generate random c generators uh but he was basically using a systematic algorithm that was logging all the new seeds that were being created uh he did this for he did the theft he pulled the trigger in january of 2018 and this was basically he had spent six months dude literally uh, stole everything and then sold at the top yeah sold (laughs) at the very top insanity (laughs) So anyway, uh, but here's the story. It actually turns out that a lot of those people that had their IOTA stolen, they actually went and filed police reports with the authorities. And the Hess State Police Department in Germany, that's one of the states in Germany, uh, started investigating last year. So um, the guy has been charged with fraud, theft, money laundering. He's facing extradition to Germany because, remember, this is a U.K. citizen. Uh, and anyway, kind of redemption a little bit. Obviously, all the people that got their IOTA stolen uh, aren't really, they still lost, but. It's uh, weird. It's weird how we feel like this gives us justice, right? Like, I don't know. 
Well, like you should at least face the consequences <clears throat> of right. Uh, you know, the most sorry. Going back real quick to that fire festival documentary, Brent. The most infuriating moment is when you see all of the people's lives who were destroyed, and then it cuts to this guy in like a fucking penthouse just chilling with his friends. Yeah. And you're like, oh my god, what the hell, you know? But yeah, anyway. it's it's uh, yeah. I mean, we we've we've lived it. Oop. I don't. Sorry, I didn't mean to put that gif in there. I was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we've lived it. We. <laughs> There's so many so similarities just, to the PPC. This is just a Freud and slip, guys. Of yeah. uh, I was looking at what the yeah, options were for he, scam. He tripped and fell and landed on Control V. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oops, didn't mean yeah. to. <laughs> oh yeah, slipped and fell. Good one, Mike. I like it. <laughs> but continue, Brent, with your. No, I'm saying points. like we've lived this. Like we've seen the the scam with the PPC and seen those guys and seen how they were living. And seeing how they basically got away with it, like I, I, I'm glad the documentary came out because that makes it less likely that this fire festival guy is going to get away with it. And I'm glad the police got involved in this iota thing because it means it's less likely that they're going to get away with it. But we've said so many times, like, like, yeah, you better not like sell somebody some weed because you'll go to jail for fucking life. But as long as you steal from the right people in the right way, and it's a lot, then you're probably fine. <laughs> then you can oh, afford yeah. to get out of it. No, white collar crime is definitely not persecuted in the same way. Um, it's ridiculous, and and also like in the case that you mentioned, the PPC, nothing really happened to those guys. Nothing. They they had the last I checked, like six months ago, they had like six counts against them, and then, but they still nothing happened. They haven't. They haven't gone to like. What do you mean? They they've only been tried, or they they haven't gone to prison or anything? No. No. Sandy selling real estate, and I don't know what uh, Brian did. Wow. Yeah. I I actually thought that was like. All right, so we should probably fill people wrapped in. Up. Oh yeah, so, we're like talking. <laughs> in different. So the PPC was the Player Poker's Championship. The three of us are poker players, and we used to have, um, we played at, attended at, and even dealt at in the early years of a poker tour in Aruba called the PPC. Well, it turns out that the two dudes running it were skimming off the top and living large and getting in debt and then getting loans and spending the prize money. And then it ended up in a big implosion where they couldn't pay the people who won the tournament uh, because the money wasn't there. So they basically stole. Uh, Brent was the one that discovered it and outed them to the poker community and things started blowing up. The winners were still, well, the winners were still not being paid, you know? So anyway, it was a big mess and uh, the winners got screwed and these guys are still just walking around no problem after the series got dissolved. Very unfortunate. Yeah, Carlos Matos is selling herbal life these days. These guys are living in mansions. I well, <clears throat> where's the justice? Where's the justice, Kareem? <laughs> there ain't no justice in this world. Maybe before. we'll get some justice for this iota idiot. All right, guys, I want to play a little tiny bit of bullish or bullshit. Ah, da 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 da. All right, Google rejects Brave slash Bat ad campaign as malicious or unwanted software. Yeah, that. So uh, I, I, I know I can't weigh in. I know the answer to this, and I know like what happened. So I, I will uh, refrain. Which, by the way, uh, Luke is going to be coming back on the show. We are right, going to well, talk about the all ads. I'll say. Roll out. All I'll say about this is from reading the title, I have not read this story, so I don't know. But almost all of that shit is just an algorithm that if you think it's unfair, you could just appeal and go through a review process. So maybe there was some automatic temporary thing. All right. So uh, this was in the RCC and they linked to a Twitter post where it includes a screenshot of uh, Google, you know, Putting a quick ban, it said it included uh, an email clip with the AdWord account express number. Hello, your ad isn't running at the moment because it's disapproved for violating Google's advertising policies. 
if your address, if you address the policy violations below, we'll take a look and see if we can start running again. And then it listed underneath policy violations, malicious or unwanted software to see the policy. So to this point, I was like, oh man, this is kind of real. Like I, I really need to dig in more. So I then went into the Twitter account of the user and started looking at his other posts and he ends up having uh, 200 followers and follows like, you know, a little more than that. Just kind of not that active of an account. Um, I was digging around. It seems like, you know, has some personal bias and or some kind of, you know, horse in the race here. So then I, I, I went digging through the Reddit comments and I enjoyed Luke actually showing up and getting upvoted to the top. Basically, Luke having right. to say, like, uh, not only are we not involved in this in any way, like, I don't know why this person's here. Like, no, this is not us. We're not we're we are we are a but we are better than this. We know we know all of what's going on here. Like, I don't understand where this came from. Uh, and then I was digging a little more and it kind of feels like this was like almost like a moon boy fan that was trying to purchase Google AdWords for Brave. That's exactly what he was doing. <laughs> and I think very interesting, but like it's weird because he was trying to do like a really beneficial thing for the project, uh, but he was doing it and it actually sounds a lot like a story of something I would do, right? Just like, oh, what Google ads? Psh, we'll get them all, whatever, whatever. Let's throw some money at it. And then like, wait, wait, wait. there's like, this is actually not as easy as you want it to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in the comments, I, I enjoyed this. Do, do, do. Let's slap this in here. He goes, hate to be the person without the pitchfork here, but I've worked for Google ads for three plus years. You guys don't know what you're talking about. That disapproval reason, malicious or unwanted software, is an automated disapproval when the Google bots detect malware on the site. Machine detects malware, malware, our machine automatically disapproves ads. It's not like Sundar is sitting nefariously in his office manually disapproving these ads or campaign. This is automatic disapproval. And then it also said, edit, if Brave is seriously running AdWords Express campaign, I've lost a lot of hope for their marketing team. So <laughs> this was not a lot of info that I would have had without this little bit of research. But uh, at first glance, it seemed like a complete waste of time. But then I ended up learning a little bit. So I thought it was interesting. Yeah, the, the, it's, I, I don't know what I guess they were just hoping to drive the price up or like, I don't know why somebody would run a Google AdWords campaign for for brave I, I really it doesn't make any it doesn't make a lot of sense but that's exactly what happened like they maybe they like had malware and they were trying to run the story to get it interested in i don't really know i have no idea what this is what the deal is but it is a weird story i'm glad luke got in there and he's like i don't know what the fuck is going on here but this is not us call everybody needs to calm down because we didn't do this and uh and their their internal team was probably like they're probably laughing so hard about what is going on with that. <laughs> so, yep, that's it. That's that's uh, yeah, that that wraps up that story. My my next story is not gonna be that great. So, um, well, oh, come on. Make sure y'all have questions. Make sure because we've got about what do we got like fifteen minutes here. So make sure you can talk about questions because I'm just gonna like talk about backed a little bit and. It's not it, – the announcement sounded a lot cooler than it actually was. So uh, even though I'm going to talk about back, it's not like I'm going to give you any big insight here. All right. So okay. uh, the the title was back is launched. The details of its Bitcoin futures project. The details was a little bit misleading. Yeah, there are details. and But when you <laughs> think like the details, you're thinking, all right, maybe they're going to say like, you know, maybe they've got branding. Maybe they, like, are telling you how the onboard process is going to go. Maybe they're talking about what Know Your Customer is going to do. Uh, but they actually have uh, released literally things like, what is our trading screen product name? It is backed. <laughs> what, what is our <laughs> screen hub name? ICUS. Oh. Uh, it's just a lot of really mundane stuff that they were talking about. Which nobody Fuck. in the comments seemed to have pointed out. I would have definitely, if I noticed that when it was posted, I would have been like, this isn't anything. Um, they did say, basically, that they are going to charge um, a certain amount. They, they basically listed out uh, their minimum price fluctuation has to be $2.50. 
the contracts have to be one Bitcoin. So those are both interesting details. Um, they're open from 8 to 8 p.m. to 6 p.m. So they're open 22 of the 24 hours of the day, which is interesting because most uh, things that are going to be traded on uh, the U.S. exchanges at least shut down after f after 4 p.m. But they right, have question for you. after hours you trading. That? So you're saying that all of, every single box contract will be worth one BTC, whatever one Bitcoin is. Yeah, I don't know if they can break them down, but like, yeah, each future contract is going to be a single Bitcoin and they have to own that Bitcoin. Well, you know, it's cool too, in a way. I mean, I know this isn't really like the same as retail or anything like that, but it's a product denominated in Bitcoin. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the decimal points is on the dollar value, not on the not on the Bitcoin value. Um, right. There are fifty cents combined exchange and clearing fee per side. Um, they can be traded in blocks, and there's all kinds of other little. You know, their <laughs> their clearing admin name is backed BTC daily. Super important to make sure we know that information. We've literally lost viewers as I started talking about this. So. Uh, <laughs> So sorry, yeah. Anyway, back is coming out. There, here's my favorite comments. Is like nobody made any com any funny comments. It's like, come on, how is there not like the only funny comment isn't even that funny. Lisfin said, 2017, soon. 2018, soon. 2019, soon. <laughs> 2020, blank. Which I think is just copy pasta from like another. Somebody said Blizzard already owns that. I think that. What is copy pasta? <laughs> Uh, it's like you take the same thing and use you... a fork. No, you don't even fork it. You just use it in a different <laughs> spot. <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> Copy paste. Uh, this seems, I mean, I don't know. It's part of the future. It's fine. All right. Yeah. I mean, I kind of agree with that. Are comment. you sure it's not 8 a.m. to 6 p.m.? I'm curious. No, I'm positive. I fucking looked at that like three times. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and and, and, I, and I was like, well, I don't even know why they're closed for those two hours. But then I guess there's probably going to be some reason or something they have to do. To well, they probably they probably need to do their books and yeah, make it all official. Yeah, kind of settlement, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, they're, they're only for that period of time. So, um. All right, so I, here's what I, I will say. Everybody's kind of waiting okay. for these ETFs to save crypto like it matters. You know what I Not think is happen. more likely to save crypto or whatever is more important than a fucking ETF? The fact that Samsung may be implementing a wallet as default into their phone. We don't know. That's not confirmed. But they there were the leaks, and the leaks were reasonably credible. Using... Samsung Pay with cryptocurrency is significantly more impactful than a bunch of people with money speculating on the price even further. And then three years later, Apple will do the same thing. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, Samsung Pay is great. I've, I've never I used Apple Pay like right in the beginning when it was super early, but um, it was Samsung Pay was super user friendly. <laughs> yes, Subtle better brag. cyborg, of Subtle course. Brag. Better crypto. You will started save crypto. using it when it came out, just so you know. Yes, better user experience is going to save crypto. You got to have the better user experience, but not at the expense of centralization, and that's the tough part. So, obviously, using Samsung Pay is super centralized. I don't, but you, but you can maybe, but you can at least control your assets. So. Dude, and not everybody's investing a ton of money, right? So let's say that you don't have a ton of money to put into crypto and everybody keeps telling you don't leave your money in exchanges and everybody and then let's say you're investing four or five hundred dollars. Why are you going to get spend 20 percent of your investment on a ledger? Right. And now all of a sudden you have your major company that is creating a safe wallet for you and the device that you're going to get anyway, which is your phone. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty big. And I think that that opens uh, the market for some people that maybe would have uh, been out of it before. And also Samsung doesn't just sell in the United States. So uh, I don't know. It's yeah, I think it's great. Yep. Uh, it, when moon ICX, that's what uh, the Samsung crypto phone thing means. <laughs> maybe. We always think we know, but we don't know anything. Yeah, you never know. Never, ever. 
All right, so yes, better crypto will save crypto. Cyborg is correct. As Quick question. Usual. All right, guys. So off air, we were discussing uh, the future of this show, discussing what we were considering doing. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts? Yeah, so we-, we noticed that there weren't a ton of people coming into the actual uh, voice chat here. So we want to think about what we can do for a medium that we can continue to do this, continue to bring in more and more people and have a little bit more than an intimate chat. Um, the, I mean, we do get, we do get the, you know, we, it's been going down a little bit each week. We haven't been super consistent. So we've considered moving to Twitter. We've considered moving to, to YouTube. If there's any, you, any medium that you think might be better, maybe this is better as a bi-weekly event so that it's more of a, um, more interesting. Maybe it's better as a monthly event. I don't really know, but if you have any ideas, we're, Definitely going to be messing around with that in the next week and trying to come up with something that we think might be uh, might be better for this particular event in the future. Yeah, those thoughts exactly. So if you have any suggestions, please let us know. And also, if you have any questions, there there's because- typing going on, so that could be interesting. <clears throat> yeah, let's. Okay, man. I felt like we had enough to talk about for the whole time, and then we just went through it like super fast. We were we were like twenty minutes in, and we were only one story in, and I was like, man, uh, yeah, I, I agree that our Discord's the same way. I mean, we we were getting significantly more action in our Discord when the market was up, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, there's there's a clear correlation between listeners between teams and all that and when we decided to do this it was back then i mean we're talking w- this was gestating for a little bit we had uh we did the monero 101 episode sgp ended up talking to us about that episode and that's how we ended up starting to formulate the idea of this weekly chat i'm not sure how the other uh cryptocurrency events are doing uh, I'm not even sure that there's any other voice events that go on um, during the week anymore. I, I know there's a, at least YouTube's and AMAs or something like that, but um, but yes, I it, it's possible that people are moving away from Discord too. I'm not really sure why. That when I, when we were at the conferences in or the conference in Thailand, everyone connected via Telegram. Nobody said you know nobody mentioned discord so um even though i prefer the discord platform 1000 times to the to the telegram platform telegram has just gotten a little bit more ubiquitous because they've got the end to end encryption if you happen to open a secret chat a lot of people don't realize that there's not end to end encryption in the group chats um it's not like whatsapp whatsapp has that encryption in a group chat which is why it's so annoying to download the pictures and all that stuff but telegram doesn't so if you're in a group chat, so, that stuff's available. Brent, how do you feel about the position that, um, like, Facebook owns WhatsApp, therefore, ultimately, there's some kind of <clears throat> made data collection? I mean, like, is there any kind of way in which um, the broader company could see any of that information? No, right? Because it's just direct intent encryption no, on all communications. I won't claim to be an expert on that, but as far as I can tell... It doesn't matter that Facebook owns WhatsApp. Maybe they're going to start throwing ads into their user experience sooner than later, but they can't get to your data. And and I there is no greater Facebook hater than me. So you know I <laughs> I don't true. think that there's you know I, and again maybe somebody's going to point something out where I'm wrong, but I don't. As long as it's end to end encrypted and the phones control the keys, I don't think you can. I don't. I don't think Facebook can see it at all. Their servers never touch it. Okay. Cool. Uh, question uh, about Discord not being too convenient for phone. I don't know. I kind of disagree with that. I use Discord on my phone pretty regularly, and uh, it's it's going to be not as convenient for the voice chat. If that's your point. Yeah, voice chat is not particularly great on the phone. The Discord app has gotten real resource intensive on computers, I guess. Um, oh, got here late. Maybe you talked about. It. Did you guys see the mm-hmm. bomb token? Is I, I feel like there's more of these coming out. This isn't the only one, but people have decided to release self-destructing currencies. So every time you send a currency, 
rather than the fees going to a miner or the fees uh, getting destroyed and then recycled back in, this one is just destroyed forever. So the more the coin is used, the more scarce it becomes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a cute little thought experiment. I'm glad they didn't run like an ICO or anything. <laughs> um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see where it goes. The way they named it, the way they branded it, it's never going to be used as an ubiquitous currency. It's just like, I, yeah. it, it, if if that was implemented to Bitcoin, it would be a real interesting thought as far as economics are concerned. But right now, you're just looking at something that's worth slightly more than nothing because because people are talking about it and uh, and is self destructing, which is not an economic model anybody's ever thought thought was good and there are plenty of arguments like kareem makes them to me all the time about coins that don't inflate if there isn't inflation then you're going to have a volatile asset by definition so if there's you can't account for economic growth if there's massive deflation then you're going to have even more ridiculous volatility so that that's the thought anyway does it continue to make you know, hodlers rich. I don't know. Probably not. But <clears throat> yeah, not seeing the value myself. But I'm probably the least economically educated amongst the three of us. Yep. There's there, raising. There's going to be shit coins coming out here, coming out there, coming out everywhere. But our our job as shit coin researchers extraordinaire is to just make sure never to research coins outside the top 50 there we go easy (laughs) all right that's i'm probably wrapping up here you guys got any closing thoughts i think that's gonna do it we got one last wintangram uh well we can either get 10 grand or go to a telegram or buy it's just like I don't think that's there. what Tangram is. Uh, ta- ta- based on the fact this guy's picture is a banana, there's a very good chance Tangram has something to do with banana. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here, but we know that uh we know banana has got a strong meme community and uh that's part of the network effect. Side note, unrelated, banana is the nut fruit. Just <laughs> It is. Mm, it is. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Fantastic. Everybody eats oh, it. Oh, it's Everybody a DAG program. program with privacy. Interesting. Okay. So mm. are they are they a blockchain-based DAG, or are they, like, kind of tangly? <laughs> I don't know. It's upcoming. I don't know. Are they doing, like, an ICO? Or... Oh, okay. Dun-na. That makes sense. I, I I'm okay. I'm glad they're doing a faucet like like Nano did because that's how. Uh, <laughs> that's I like that release method. I'm I'm getting a call that I actually have to pick up. So, so uh, alrighty guys, I'm, I'm out. See y'all next. Peace. All right, have a good one.